stress, fear, depression, spiritual warfare. Are you weighted down? Do you need refreshing? Welcome, welcome everyone to the Warriors for Christ podcast, where we seek to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be light and salt in a dark and tasteless world with your host, Kyle. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Warriors for Christ podcast. I'm Kyle. And I'm Sam. And we are delighted that you, our audience, are out there to listen to today's episode. Before I begin, I'm going to read from Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Sam, what has the Lord put on your heart for us to get into in this episode? Kyle, we're going to continue in the episodes of False Confession. Do you have a false confession? We just finished the one. We just got it posted, and we're going on number two here. And it's it's a very important topic, Kyle. Yep. Because just as in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there's many who confess Jesus as Lord, many who believe in God, many who think who think and believe they're servants of righteousness. They but. seek, they serve, they pray, they worship. But, but God's going to say, by your deeds, you deny me. That's right. There's a big but there, but by your deeds, you deny him. Yep. And uh, yeah, that Psalm 1 was a good read. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that when we get get started. All right. Well, with that, I'll open us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for today. We are so thankful, Lord, for the truth in your word. Father, we're thankful that we have a time together that we get a chance to Go through your word, expound your word, explain your word, so that the wicked can be turned, so that the lost can be found, so that those held captive by false homilies, false teachings, may be freed. Father, we pray that as we work, that we do your will, Father, that you bless it, and that you be glorified through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Counsel of the wicked, Sam. Nor stand in the path of sinners. That wide path. Does not sit in the seat of scoffers. But delights in the law of Yahweh. Kyle, we cannot be a true Christian if we still have wickedness in our life. We are not a true Christian or a man who is blessed if we still struggle with sin and cannot stop and have to confess our sin every night. Path of sinners. It does not say how blessed is the man who walks sometimes in the counsel of the wicked. It does not say, blessed is the man who occasionally or sometimes stands in the path of sinners or sits in the seat of scoffers. No, it doesn't say that. The man that's blessed meditates on the law of Yahweh day and night. Many people wonder and they struggle with 
What do you mean a good tree only bears good fruit? I do good, but of course I still sin. I always sin. Bad fruit. It's because you have not been planted by streams of waters. You are not able to yield your fruit in season. You are still wicked in the eyes of God. And God has a different, me different message for the sinner and the wicked. In verse 4 through verse 6, the final three verses of chapter 1. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. They will not stand before God, Kyle. Like chaff they'll blow away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Kyle, there's a difference between, between a sinner and a righteous man. That's right. One will stand in the presence of, of the righteous. It's all about the way that they're able to walk. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Kyle, there are so many people who still have wicked ways in their life, and they are so deceived in that they think they are not going to perish. Oh, but they profess Jesus, Sam. Oh, I know. And that's what we're going to continue to talk about today. By their deeds, they deny. Those who actually deny our Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Kyle, the book of Jude we're going to be looking at today. Kyle, there's a great danger in the church. There are people unnoticed amongst the midst claiming to be God followers, believing in Christ. But God says they deny Jesus. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Wow. Kyle, do you, you would think that it'd be fairly obvious if somebody were denying Jesus Christ. Don't you think that person would kind of stand out in a church? Oh, yeah. I'm sure, there's people, you see them on TV or on, on YouTube, you'll find folks that outrightly would would mock and, and uh, say things against Christ. Kyle, it says these people... Crept in. They creep in. Unnoticed. They're unnoticed. They were beforehand marked out for this condemnation. Because God knew this was going to happen. Ungodly persons. Does it, it's not that they don't believe in the grace of God. They believe in the grace of God, but in the eyes of God, they're taking God's grace and turning it into licentiousness. Now, licentiousness is basically a liberty or a license to go do wickedness, to continue in sin. Now, much of the people who turn the grace of God into licentiousness, they aren't going around saying, oh, yeah, you can just sin to sin. But... By not speaking the truth, Kyle, basically they are saying you're going to continue to sin because they're going to tell you it's normal to struggle with sin every day of your life. It's normal to confess your sins every night before you go to bed. That's the lie. When you receive power and all sins removed, sin is like a statistical anomaly. It doesn't happen or hardly ever occurs. Peter, you have the one recorded event. He stood condemned before he repented. Paul, you have when he spoke in the historical present. He was started in the past tense and then went into the present tense narrative. But people always jump in when he's in the present tense narrative and miss the transition from historical to present. Timothy almost in danger. Timothy, we did the book of uh, 2 Timothy. Timothy was in danger of following away, um, just as all of Asia deserted Paul Including because of fear of his life and, and the persecutions of, of authorities. So it is real and can happen 
the problem is you can get cut off, but it's not normal. Someone who's been clothed with power and has been freed from all sin. Kyle, those people don't struggle with sin. That's right. Sin just typically is not existent in their life. And should it occur, it's quickly pointed out and they repent. Or if they don't, they get cut off. And this is there's this huge false perception. And unfortunately, it's causing many who will be accused by God of denying Jesus Christ. That's right. Now, let's look at some examples and put this into context of what do we mean by denying Christ? What do we mean by taking the grace of God and turning it into a license to sin? Kyle, we have some examples here. So let's go look at the example of what God says, not what man says, because man will say, oh, I'll tell you what that means. That means you're just deliberately, habitually sinning, and I don't do that. Well, that's fine. You can say that, but that's not what God means, and that's not what God says. That's a Your bad... thinking is a lie of the devil. That's right. It's a bad homily, a bad teaching. That's right. It's a bad homily and teaching that we covered in just the, the part one episode from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 to 34. Now, verse 5 of Jude. Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. Huh. A people that he saved, he subsequently didn't, uh, or he subsequently destroyed. Now, let's look at this one, the people that he saved. Now, we know that Moses, God used Moses to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Out of the land of bondage. We did a whole episode on that in the very beginning. Uh, what has God always required? Uh, the things um, you didn't know. Uh, we did several different episodes uh, looking at Israel. And one of the things that, you, that we point out is God calls Israel his firstborn son. That he redeemed them with the Passover blood of the lamb. He brought them out. They believe. They feared God. And then God subsequently destroys them because they test God in the wilderness by continuing to sin. And we cover a lot more of that, too, in the, uh, the episode series we did on uh, test and, temp- and, and temptation. Um, and I think we did like four-part series on that. But when you look at this, and how he destroys them, and how they're accused of unbelief and not truly believing. Destroyed those who did not believe. We're going to get insight in what it means to believe, because most people say, oh, well, that's easy. I do believe. Well, if you listen to the part one episode we just did in this series right now, you'll know that Jesus said, if you still commit sin, well, even to those he spoke who, quote, quote, believed, he says, you're still sons of your father, the devil. Now, let's go over and we're going to turn to the book of Hebrews to understand this concept of belief. And we're going to look at Hebrews, I think, chapter 3 and 4, and I'm convicted to share from a verse in chapter 5 as, um, as I'm speaking here. So let's flip to Hebrews. Now, starting in Hebrews chapter 3, Kyle, this people that God saved, he brought them out. In chapter 3, God warned them not to harden their hearts, not to test God. But the problem is they continued to go astray. And so he was angry. And what did he say in verse 10 and verse 11? Therefore, I was angry with this generation and said, They always go astray in their heart. And they did not know my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Now, they were taught the ways of God, Kyle. They just struggled with obedience. They believed in God. They feared God. They followed God's servant. They always go astray in their heart. But they continue to go astray in their heart. You know, and it gets back to the new heart and the new spirit. They they were not cleansed. All sin had not been cleansed out of their heart. So... 
these people, it says, be careful, be careful to what, Kyle, in verse 12? Take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. That falls away. You see, these people were near to God, Kyle. They just fell away. They couldn't continue. There's a lot of people today that feel as though they're near to God, that they believe, but God's going to accuse them of having a believing heart that falls away. An evil, unbelieving heart. And we say, why? What is it that causes people to fall away? What is it that hardens the heart? For But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Ah, uh, you see, Kyle, it all comes down to sin. Sin. You see, that's what made God angry. Even though he redeemed them with the blood of the Lamb, it was so that they would come out of the former sins and now live in holiness, as we covered in the previous episode. Be holy in all your behavior as I am holy. It's oh. a command. Yep. But they couldn't. They continued to have a problem. For by their deeds they deny him. And what was this problem in verse 17, Kyle? That he with, took their life. And with whom was his was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? So you who are listening, you want to know what it means? The life of those that he took, that he accused of taking the grace of God and turning it into licentiousness, the same way of how God cha- charged these people here? You see, God had mercy. He led the people out. He went to redeem them, but he wanted to cleanse them and make them a holy people. They wouldn't come into obedience. Even though they believed God, even though they followed, even though they trembled and feared, they continued to sin. That was the charge against them, why God took their life. Now, you may be thinking, ha, that's Old Testament. That doesn't apply to me. Not at all. I'm under a different covenant. Well, let's see if it applies to us or not. Let's make sure we truly understand what, what, how God viewed this situation. So they continued to sin. And so because they continued to sin, what did God swear in verse 18? Oh, and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So you see, you continue to struggle with sin. God's going to accuse you of disobedience. You don't come into obedience. And the problem is, even though the people followed God and believed, if you can't come into obedience because you're disobedience, Kyle, what is God going to charge you of in verse 19? So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Sin and continuing to sin will result in a charge by God of you actually not being a true believer. Because a true believer, Kyle, results in a conversion. That's right. It's a changed life, not by man's efforts or works, but by the power and the grace of God as evidence and the proof of the transformation in one's life. Verse 1 in chapter 4. So, Kyle, does this apply to us? You bet. People will say, oh, but it doesn't apply to us. It's, it's different promises. Therefore, let us fear, if while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. Kyle, did Israel have the same good news preached to them as we have preached to us today? Oh, yes. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. And the evidence of that was because they continued to disobey. Read verse 6. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience. So, Kyle, what's the warning to us today in verse 11? Verse 11, therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall through following the same example of disobedience. So all you who want to sit there and cling to the false belief of they were under a different promise, God's not going to treat me the same, it's different. 
Oh. What do you want to call God a liar? Well, I mean, you're already calling God a liar if if you don't agree that He wants to cleanse you for, cleanse you from all sin and you can live free. Uh, that's like we covered in the last episode. People confess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. By their deeds they deny Him. Just like in Hebrews that we read, people who sneak into the church, they're taking the grace of God and trying to turn it into licentiousness. And that's what God's going to accuse you of. You can argue and say all you want. It doesn't apply. It's the same gospel, the same good news. Chapter 5. Verse 8, Although verse he, 9, Although he was a son, referring to Christ, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Kyle, God is serious about obedience. Flipping back to um, to Jude. So he's trying to explain and teach to us what it means by taking the grace of God and turning it into licentiousness. To taking the grace of God and yet God is going to accuse people of denying Christ. These are people in the church that go unnoticed. Creeping in. They're unnoticed because people think they're godly Christians when they aren't. How do you know? This is how. They still struggle with sin. It's just as when the angels, when they sinned against God. And angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper abode. He has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Kyle, Sodom and Gomorrah, they sinned in verse 7, and what did God do to them? Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as those indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh. Kyle, these same people who are these hidden reefs, Kyle, these people that are in the church, and will be accused by God as having a false confession. Kyle, God says they, these false people have gone what way in verse 11? Verse 11, woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and pay, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the air of Balaam, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Now, for all you who are listening, do you understand what happened with Cain? Do you understand the circumstances of Balaam? Do you understand what happened with Korah? If you're a Would you say listener, that you're any of those people or not? If you're Let a reg- me go ahead and I was just gonna say, if you're a regular listener, you have heard about Cain and Abel and the differences in their sacrifices. You have heard about Balaam and how outwardly he lived and prophesied righteously and obeyed and obeyed the, the commands of the Lord in outwardness. And you've heard about the story of the rebellion of Korah here. Yep. So we're going to look at First Cain. Now, Kyle, just as Cain, and much of people in the church today, Kyle, did Cain believe in God? Oh, he believed. He, he gave did an believe offering. in God. He gave an offering. So was Cain, you said, was Cain worshiping an offering to God? Oh, he was. He gave an offering. He, he did. He, brought... he believed God. That's right. He brought his tithe. He, he brought his offering to God. The problem is, much of like the church today and Israel, who believe in God, who have a faith, who serve, who worship, God doesn't accept him because they still have a problem. In 1 John chapter 3, Verse 11 and verse 12. Actually, yeah, verse 11 and verse 12. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the evil one, and slew his brother. And for what reason did he he slay him? Because his deeds were evil 
and his brothers were righteous. You see, Cain, or, or Abel, was a righteous man. He produced righteous, good fruit. Now, much of the people today say, oh, but I do good deeds too. Well, Cain probably thought the same thing. He served God. He did other things for God. The problem is he had another thing. You see, he couldn't comply with the greatest commandment. Not just loving God, but loving our neighbor as ourselves. You see, he couldn't love one another. He still had sin. Now, if you've listened to the episode we did on love, the greatest commandment, you'll know that to love as God defines love, to love your neighbor as yourself, is you no longer do what to them, Kyle? You no longer sin against them. You no longer sin. Go listen to that episode, and that's what God teaches. And that's in Romans. It is. Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 12. It's also in other places, but we cover it fully in that episode. Amen. So Cain couldn't, because Cain, well, he was of his he father still had devil. Bad, he still had bad fruit. Yep. And so it's much like the church today. They, they try to make excuses for their sin, thinking that they can serve God and still struggle with sin and not overcome it. They think they're wearing some kind of magic cloak, Sam. Now with Balaam. Kyle, we did an episode on Balaam. Yes, we did. I think we did one, uh, the prophet of Jonah and Balaam that you don't want to be like. I don't remember the exact title, but you can do a search on Balaam and Jonah. Yep. Uh, we also covered it in the episode of Second Peter. But Balaam, Kyle, when you read through the Bible in Numbers, uh, where it talks about him, I think it's Numbers chapter 31, it goes through and talks about Balaam was a prophet of God. God spoke to him. Yep. He spoke all the words of God, exactly as God said. When God gave him the instruction to bless, he blessed. And when God gave him the instruction to obey and to go, he went. He was obedient in all the things that God commanded him. The problem is, he still struggled with sin in his heart. And God knows the thoughts of men. So even though he was outwardly obedient, God rejected him because he had a bad heart. It's much of like the people today. Most people outwardly, when you look at them, they're like, oh, that person serves God. Oh, God actually speaks to them. Let me ask you, you who are listening, has God ever spoke to you directly and given you a, a detailed word for word message to give to another person? Well, he did with Balaam because Balaam was his prophet. And Balaam was rejected by God because Balaam couldn't overcome the sinful thoughts, and the sin in his heart. Or you look at Korah. Korah, you'll find the episode of the rebellion more thoroughly discussed in Numbers chapter 16. We did an episode on that as well. Google search Korah with the Warriors for Christ podcast. Kyle, did the men of Korah, do you remember what the argument was? Oh, but they thought they were serving God, and they, that Moses wasn't serving they God. They thought that they were serving God. You see, the dispute was, who was the true servants of God? Uh, they said Moses had gone far enough. You see, Moses was speaking against sin, even to the point that uh, a man was put to death for gathering sticks. He was working on the Sabbath. Because there's no tolerance for sin. No tolerance. And it, it was uh, intentional. The person intentionally knew what they were doing, and they did it anyways. You know, kind of like some of you. Or like you know something's wrong, and even knowing in advance it's wrong, you do it. Not even that you got tricked into something. The devil tries to trick people into it. You knowingly did it. And you still do it. You see, Korah and the many people with him, 250 leaders, they thought they were servants of God. Struck down. They thought they were a holy people. Sent to the inwards of the earth. And yet God took all their lives, and even when God took their lives supernaturally by opening the earth, sending fire down from heaven, sending a plague, they continued to rebel and argue because they were convinced in their own mind, because they thought they were servants of God, because they said they believed, because they said God was their God. You see, people, it doesn't matter what you think. Your life does not line up with what God says, and God's words stand against you. Oh, I assure you, you will perish. You will not stand. Kyle, what does he say these people are? 
You see, in verse 12 of Jude, he says these people are like hidden reefs. And your love feasts, when they feast with you without fear, they care for themselves. Clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam. Wandering stars, for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. Kyle, you listen and you're like, wow, that's really harsh. That is definitely not me. I love God. I love Christ. I love to help people. I love going to church and worshiping and singing and serving. That is not me. But by their deeds, they deny him. That's right. Kyle, does it say these people are obvious, rebellious people in verse 12? It says no. Hidden they're, reefs. They're hidden reefs. You see, you don't even recognize these people, Kyle clouds without water until you shipwreck you see uh you can't see them uh, they look like a rain cloud they look healthy carried but they away aren't. by the wind uh, they're a tree but they have no fruit you see people a good tree cannot be bear bad fruit jesus was clear on this you cannot be hot and cold you cannot serve two masters you cannot continue to think that you walk in righteousness and yet you cannot overcome sin in your life Read the warnings to the churches in Revelation 3, folks. We did an episode on that. The churches. So, because of all this, Kyle, God says he's going to execute his judgments. Yep. In verse 15. To execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds which they have done in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Kyle, they're going to, they're going to be perished. They, they speak lies and they speak against God. They don't speak the truth. Oh, they're grumblers. But we were reminded, Jesus reminded, what does he say in verse 17 on? But you, beloved... Ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you in the last time, there will be mockers, following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions. Worldly-minded. Does it say they have the Spirit? Devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. That's right. We just mentioned the word love there, Sam. And a lot of people don't know what it means to love and keeping yourself in the love of God. Again, to love God and love your neighbor as yourself is you no longer do wrong. You don't wrong God and you don't wrong your neighbor. People, this is not my definition. This is what God has said. That's how you fulfill the law, folks, because the Spirit does that. But when you try to come up with other false definitions, you will be accused by God of turning His grace into a license to sin. And I guarantee you, you will perish for that. There's only one solution, and that's to repent and come to the power of God and the true grace of God and to stop being a liar. Kyle, what does God do for us in verse 24? Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Keep you from doing what, Kyle? And to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. You see, Kyle, God is able to keep us from stumbling. That's right. God is able for us to stand and walk blameless in his presence. And and we'll I'll be doing a, another episode sometime in the future, just looking at all the passages where God talks about blameless in our behavior. Now, the one we just did on, on the previous one about um, false confession, part one, Kyle, we, we talked about that, holy in all your behavior, as God oh. is holy. 
All your behavior. Uh, that we're to now live in the true grace of God is whether or not you can suffer and still overcome and live with the same purpose of Christ, committing no sins right. while you're suffering. Stand firm. And in the trials. So with that, Kyle, I'd like to close with two passages in Revelation. Chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. If you want to read that one. Yes. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. The righteous deeds of the saints. Kyle, it's not some magical cloak. That's right. It's actually the righteous deeds of the saints. It doesn't say the righteous act of Christ. It says the righteous deeds of the saints. Because when somebody has received the gift of the Holy Spirit because of what Christ did, they are then to be put on Christ and walk as Christ, be imitators of Christ, walking with righteous deeds that they now produce as proof and evidence of the Spirit of God and Christ being in them. Be holy as he is holy. And Kyle, Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 and 12, they're still going to be wicked, but we're to be righteous. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong, and the one who is filthy still be filthy. But what about the righteous man, Kyle? And let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness, and the one who is holy still keep himself holy. Why, Kyle? Why is it important to, to continue to walk in righteousness and keep ourselves holy as God is holy? Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to his deeds. Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is clear. Those who want to be quarrelsome and contentious... Well, your words are going to judge them on the last day. And your word will cut like a sharp sword and devour those who refuse to humble themselves and repent and receive of the true grace of God. A grace that does not deny Christ. A grace that does not make excuses to tolerate continued sin because of weakness. Because the flesh has not yet been made strong by your power. Father, I pray that you will convict people of your truth, that they will come to repentance. And I encourage all those who are true saints to continue to stand firm, proclaim the truth, even though much of the persecutions you face is from the false church. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, Sam, before we wrap up and close off the episode here and have it go into the outro, I just want to thank all of our listeners that have been uh, listening throughout the years that we've been doing this. We've held, had well over 200 episodes in the more than two years that we've been doing this. And, and we want to thank you. Uh, there's been a lot of encouragement because we've, we've heard from a lot of folks whose lives they say were changed because of the, the work that the Lord has, has uh, put us on in this pathway. And uh, we want to thank all of you that are out there. That are, you're sharing the episodes with your friends and family. You're, uh, you're encouraging them to hear it and listen, and, uh, and we thank you that you share that, that you're doing, you are a part of this work and this ministry. If this program has, has touched you in a way that has helped lead you and change your life, and in my case, uh, Sam basically, as a servant of the Lord, snatched me from the flames. If you feel like you were snatched from the flames and you want to let us know about that, our email address is questions at warriorsforchristpodcast.com with the number four in there. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. Um, we have uh, weekly Zoom calls where we get together and share things as a group and a community. And we encourage you to contact us about possibly joining that and uh, and sharing how the Lord has uh, has changed your life. And, and uh, we're just so thankful that, that uh, you're out there serving and working by sharing this program. And we pray that God bless you, saints. For those of you who question what we're doing and how we're doing it, um, you know, 
we're, we'll we'll go ahead and suffer the blows with uh, with you sending your uh, snake bitten uh, emails. We read all of those as well. Um, we pray that God reach you through His mercy, that you might be able to stand in His presence at the end time. In the name of Jesus, I pray that. Well, and Kyle, also for those who do, because one, I always tell people, don't just blindly accept. Go to the Word of God, and you must prove it for yourself through God's Word. That's right. But don't be naive and ignorant and only cling to a fraction or half of the verses. That's what the devil does. That's how he manipulates and deceives. Challenge. If you have questions, I expect you to challenge. Yep. Ask your questions and challenge. But if you're willing to go to Scripture and investigate, then please, I would love the opportunity to, to work with you, to help you, to answer your questions that point you to Scripture, um, right? There's, there's, there's no wrong question when you're seeking. You, it's, right. it's being responsible to exhaustively examine the Word. And frankly, Kyle, if everybody did that, we wouldn't have all these false um, faiths out there. That's right. Uh, so I encourage that. And, and I, would, I would love to have the opportunity to spend and invest time in doing that. That's right. But what I'm not willing to do is just to go back in a fruitless, mindless argument. I said, I am more than willing to explain and point you to Scripture. Read this, read that. Oh, if you didn't know this about, you know, this part of Scripture, or if you, if you back up, um, that, that's what I'm, I'm willing to do. Is but to people who pluck out a verse out of context and don't, and use that to, to, uh, to create a doctrine, or not willing to have the dialogue to say, okay, well, let's go look at that verse and let's look to see what, how God actually defines it and not continue to define it using man's wisdom, but what God has already said, if we would have just kept reading in the Word of God. And those are the types of things that I point out to people. Yeah. So uh, that's it, Kyle. That's it. Um, thank you, folks, for listening. Have a great day. If you enjoyed the program, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Thanks for listening. 